Hi everybody. Welcome to Universe View Odyssey channel. Bohr model and quantum jump, Quantum Odyssey 7. Rutherford's discovery of the atomic nucleus through alpha particle scattering in 1911 was a major step in atomic research. Atoms were thought to have a small but atomic nucleus that occupies most of the mass, with electrons revolving around it, and a solar system shaped with planets revolving around the Sun. So the Rutherford model of the atom was likened to the solar system and came to be called the solar system atomic model. However, this soon raised new questions about the atom. Electrons must revolve around the nucleus. Otherwise, the electrons will be attracted to the nucleus by the electric attraction and stick together. When electrons are attached to the nucleus of an atom, it means that the atom is squeezed, that is, the material is squeezed. But in reality, this doesn't happen. It seemed clear that electrons were orbiting around the nucleus. Then, according to Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism, electrons revolving must emit light. Therefore, after the emission of light, the electron's energy will be reduced by that much and eventually be attracted to the atomic nucleus. Even in this case, the atoms must be squeezed. But the reality was not like that. There is another problem. A heated atom emits light. Therefore, it can be inferred that the electrons are revolving in the atom. However, according to the Rutherford model, as atoms revolve, they gradually lose kinetic energy, so the emitted light must be a continuous spectrum. But the reality is not. It is a discontinuous line spectrum made up of a specific monochromatic light. In what state are the electrons revolving so that the atom maintains a stable state and emits light in the line spectrum? This has been the hottest topic in physics surrounding atomic research since 1911. In this situation, Niels Bohr presented an extraordinary prescription in 1913. The key to this prescription is the transition or quantum jump. It was not theoretically derived, but an emergency measure tailored to the stability of atoms and the phenomenon of emitted light, line spectrum. For example, it is assumed that electrons do not emit light when orbiting a specific orbit even when they revolve around the nucleus, but emit light of a specific wavelength when electrons jump between orbits and orbits, quantum jump. Bohr's emergency measure was something that could not be derived from classical physics at the time, but it must have been his excellent physical intuition. Now, let's look at the process of thinking that Bohr overcomes the limitations of the Rutherford atomic model and presents the Bohr atomic model. Bohr said this in his conversation with Heisenberg. The starting point of my research was the stability of matter, which can only be said to be a wonder from the point of view of physics so far. According to Newtonian mechanics, the solar system never recovers its original state when it collides with another star system. However, Bohr was referring to the fact that an atom, thought to have a shape similar to that of the solar system, the Rutherford model of the atom, does not change when it interacts with neighboring atoms. Bohr put forward the following bold postulates to explain the stability and line spectrum of atoms that the Rutherford atomic model could not explain. One in an atom, the electron revolves only in a fixed orbit. When revolving in such a set orbit, electrons do not emit or absorb light. An atom in this state is called a stationary state. That is, an atom has a certain discrete energy state, stationary state. Two, when electrons transition or quantum jump from one orbit to another, Atoms discontinuously absorb or emit energy in the form of monochromatic light. The frequency of light emitted or absorbed is proportional to the difference in energy between the two orbits. Upsilon equals E, H equals E1 E2, H. Greater than Bohr frequency condition Upsilon equals frequency of emitted light, E1 equals energy of electron in first orbit, E2 equals energy of electron in second orbit, H equals Planck constant. 3. When an electron moves in a circular orbit, its momentum is limited to an integer multiple of Planck's constant. In other words, the angular momentum of an electron, orbital radius r times momentum, is the integer multiple of Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. Angular momentum L equals nh, 2 pi, Bohr's quantum condition, quantization postulate. 4. When electrons are in a stable orbit, stationary state, their behavior follows the laws of classical mechanics, correspondence principle. 
none of these assumptions of Bohr can be derived from classical physics. But Bohr did not make postulates randomly. Bohr paid attention to atomic phenomena such as the stability of atoms and the line spectrum emitted by atoms, and applied Planck's quantum hypothesis and Einstein's light quantum hypothesis to these phenomena. Bohr paid attention to the Barmer series of Johann Jakob Barmer, a Swiss mathematician and physicist who discovered the regularity of the line spectrum of the hydrogen atom. The line spectrum of a hydrogen atom is red, blue, dark blue, purple, etc., and a certain regularity was found by examining the wavelength. In other words, the ratio of these wavelengths showed a deep relationship with integer. Barmer series was not explained by the Rutherford model. If the Rutherford model was correct, the spectrum of hydrogen atoms would have to be a continuous spectrum. In the end, Bohr set these postulates boldly based on his analysis of Barmer series, Planck's quantum hypothesis, and Einstein's light quantum hypothesis. This made it possible to answer the question of atoms, namely, do atoms emit light when heated? And why does that light show a line spectrum of a specific wavelength, frequency, like the Barmer series? Bohr model explains that when electrons revolve the lowest orbit, the Bohr radius, their energy is lowest and can never be lower. Bohr succeeded in creating an atomic model in which electrons are not sucked into the nucleus by this quantum condition. To summarize Bohr's atomic model, electrons can have only certain orbits, maintain a stable state while orbiting, but absorb or emit light only when transitioning to other orbits. Bohr's postulate 4 that when electrons are in a stable orbit, stationary state, they behave according to the theory of classical physics is called the correspondence principle. Bohr could not explain the transition phenomenon with the laws of classical mechanics, but through this postulate, he laid the foundation for explaining the quantum theory in the language of classical mechanics. Bohr came up with the correspondence principle to explain the line spectrum of electrons. According to classical mechanics, Maxwell's electromagnetic theory, the light emitted by electrons as they revolve reflects the electron's orbit and the frequency and amplitude of the electron revolving the orbit. Strangely, however, the light emitted by Bohr's hypothesized transition between orbits did not reflect the electron's orbit and frequency. However, since the size of the energy level of a hydrogen atom is inversely proportional to the square of the number of orbitals n, an integer, there is almost no difference in energy between orbits when the number of orbital states n is very large. Then, we can think of it as the same as when an electron emits light when it transitions from a high orbit to orbit right below, but emits light when it revolves as in classical mechanics. This is where Bohr conceived the concept of the correspondence principle. Classical mechanical radiation, emission of light, and radiation by orbital transition in the Bohr atomic model have completely different processes. But when the number of orbits is large, as a result, the frequency value of radiation is almost the same. He used this method to derive the formula for the quantized hydrogen energy level. Surprisingly, this agrees exactly with the experimental values. Bohr eventually succeeded in expressing the phenomenon of atoms by borrowing the language of classical physics. The quantum world is fundamentally different from the world of classical physics, but humans can never understand it without using the language of classical physics. This later becomes the core of the standard interpretation of quantum mechanics, the Copenhagen interpretation. Bohr went one step further and assumed that electrons in a stationary state obey classical mechanical laws. Through this, he theoretically derived the atomic size, Bohr radius, of the most stable state, n equals 1, which was exactly the same as 10 nanometers, 10 to the power of 8 cm, obtained experimentally. He also applied the correspondence principle to the energy level formula to derive quantum conditions. As a result, Bohr succeeded in establishing a theory that explained the spectrum of light emitted by atoms, the stability of atoms, and the discontinuity of energy, which had been impossible to explain until then, by setting four hypotheses based on the light quantum hypothesis. The spectrum of visible light emitted by hydrogen atoms, that is, the identity of the Barmer series, is the light emitted when electrons in orbits n equals 3, n equals 4, n equals 5, and n equals 6 transition to orbit n equals 2, respectively. This was clearly explained by Bohr's theory. Bohr's theory qualitatively explained the chemical reactions of atoms and their line spectra. Bohr's postulates had the disadvantage of not being derived from classical mechanics or electromagnetic theory, but it explained the phenomena of atoms amazingly well. 
Bohr's hypothesis that the electron's energy levels were discrete was proved only a year later in an experiment by James Frank and Hertz. Bohr's early model was further generalized by Arnold Sommerfeld of the University of Munich and reborn as the Bohr-Sommerfeld model. This Bohr-Sommerfeld model is called the old quantum theory, meaning a theory before quantum mechanics was completed. However, in 1923, the Bohr-Sommerfeld model faced a serious crisis. The most direct reason is that this model fails to explain the second simplest helium atom, two electrons, after hydrogen, which has one electron. A more fundamental problem is that Bohr's postulates could not be explained physically at the time. According to classical mechanics, the motion of an object follows causal determinism. In other words, if you know the current state, you should be able to know the before and after states. Therefore, it was a serious problem that the Bohr model could not explain when and where electrons in atomic orbits transition, quantum jump. Accordingly, the quantum jump has emerged as a hot issue in the physics world. Except for Bohr's Copenhagen school, most physicists, such as Einstein, Schrödinger, and Pauli, criticized the quantum jump as a mysterious and bizarre hypothesis. It is no exaggeration to say that matrix mechanics, Heisenberg, and wave mechanics, Schrödinger, which are complete quantum mechanics systems, were born in the process of fighting for a quantum jump. Thanks for watching.